<laughs> Good morning, everyone. Morning. You all come on in the room. Uh, welcome to TWC and welcome again to our home. It's so good to have you all here. Uh, so good to see everyone. We miss you all so much. We miss you all so much. Can't wait to be back in live worship. Charlotte has her donut this morning uh, for first Sunday. Um, we were able to last week to donate to the United States Postal Service. So we thank you all so much. Give yourselves a hand. We were able to give uh, face masks. Um, uh, I was ready to say reading glasses. Uh, not reading glasses. <laughs> <laughs> Vitamin C, um, plastic gloves, whole nine yards to make sure that those that are still out on the front line are very, very well taken care of. Amen. Amen. So again, thank you all so much for your donations. Thank you all so much for giving each week, all that we have been virtual these past couple of weeks. And we'll probably be virtual these next couple of weeks as well. Continue to give because what we're doing inside of the community is something that we, it's something that would not be possible if we're not for you all's giving. Okay? You trying to say anything? Nope. Good. <laughs> well, we're going to pray and then we're going to jump right into our lesson today. So grab somebody by the hand and then let's pray. Okay, God, we thank you for this day. We thank you, God, for being with us. We thank you, God, for sheltering us. Oh, God, we ask that inside of this moment all over the world, as people are inside of their homes, oh, God, that you will give us a, a moment of peace, that you will give us a moment of hope, that you will continue to show your love. And let us know, oh, God, that after this is all over, that there is a beacon of light, that there is something, oh, God, that you want us to take from this and that you will place us on a firm foundation. We thank you, God, for those that are tuning in. We ask your God a special blessing and covering over their house in the same way that you have covered our home. It's in your name that we pray. Amen. 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 Say bye, Charlie. <laughs> So good to see you all as always. Now I know that that a lot of a lot of individuals, like I said, are, are going to be at home over these next couple of weeks, and really what dropped inside of my spirit last week after um, after we had after we had gone live for last week's worship is that I know a lot of people right now are, are really wondering, really feeling what in the world is going to happen after all this is over after the global pandemic, when it comes down to the, the health crisis that is happening around the world, what is going to happen after this? And that's really what I wanna talk about today and from the topic after this, but then also what was dropped inside of my spirit as, as God revealed this specific scripture to me is that the, this inside of your life might not be what's happening inside of the world right now, that we have some other thises inside of our lives. You know, a lot of people might be asking, you know, what will happen after this relationship? What will happen after this career change? What will happen after this health diagnosis? And one of the things that, that God dropped in my spirit and God gave us this word inside of the book of 1 Peter, 1 Peter, the fifth chapter is where we're going today, is that there is hope, there is encouragement, there is actually something that God promises us after we get through whatever it is that we are going through. Because let's just be honest, this will not be the only time that we are feeling this stress. This will not be the only time that we are feeling this level of anxiety. This is not the only time that a lot of people will be going through depression, that a lot of people will be going through um, uh, so many mental things. I talked about it last week as, 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 how, as how sometimes there is such a play on our minds. But what happens after the storm? What happens after the pandemic? What happens after the breakup? What happens after the layoff? What happens after the school closes and you can't graduate on, uh, you, you can't walk down the aisle in May like everyone else did the years before you? There is hope. And like I said, First Peter, the fifth chapter and the 10th verses where we're coming from today, because again, God gives us a hope. God gives us this, 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 this renewed level of faith. And what Paul says inside of this specific book, Book, and what Paul says inside of this specific book to Peter is something that I honestly do believe that if we can just hone into this one specific verse over these next couple of weeks, over these next couple of months, over these next couple of years, and whatever it is that you are experiencing inside of your life, God gives us exactly what we need. So let's go to, let's, let's go straight there. The book of First Peter, the fifth chapter and the 10th verse. I love reading from the New Living Translation. Uh, there are some words inside of here that we're going to dig out that I honestly do believe really, really help us to understand the scripture much better. It says, in his kingdom, God called you to share in his eternal glory by means of Christ Jesus. Watch this. So after you have suffered 
a little while, he will restore, support, and strengthen you, and he will place you on a firm foundation. Verse 11, all power to him forever. Amen. Now, really, this scripture can really, really speak for itself, but I want to break it down just a little bit because on the onset of the scripture, Paul literally writes, he says, after you have suffered a little while. And I want to encourage somebody today and let you know that whatever it is that you are going through, even the things that are happening inside of the globe around us, it's not going to last forever. This thing is not going to last forever inside of inside of the health pandemic, while whatever it is that you might be experiencing on your job, whatever it is that you might be experiencing inside of your relationship, whatever it is that you might be experiencing with regards to your academic pursuit. Paul says, the Bible says, God says that after you have suffered a little while, and I want you all to think when it it comes down to the global perspective and the long-term scheme of things. These few weeks that we've been, you know, quarantined inside of the house, it's not forever. We'll be we'll be looking back at this, you know, five years from now, a couple of months from now. It's like, you know something, remember we was, you know, locked inside the house for two to four weeks? It's not going to last forever. There are some things, there are some people out there right now that might be inside the unemployment line. I want to encourage you and let you know it's not going to last forever. There are going to be people out there where relationships and health issues are going to come up, but I want to encourage you, just as God has encouraged us, that this thing will not last forever. Paul says, after you have suffered a little while, after you have suffered a little while, and I really want us to put this into perspective, because the little bit of suffering that we might be going through now in whatever element it is inside of our lives is in no way comparable to the great joy, the peace, the love, the long-term happiness that you have had inside of your life. This little bit of suffering that you are experiencing right now, this little bit of uneasiness that you are experiencing right now, this little bit of uncertainty that you are experiencing right now, the Bible lets us know that after a little while, this too shall pass. This too will move on. I want to talk about that whole this too shall pass. Because I know a lot of people out here, you know, saying, you know, this too shall pass. And the Bible says that this too shall pass. I want to give you all just a little tidbit. This too shall pass is not inside of the Bible. Okay. This is one of the reasons why we got to learn how to study our word. And maybe this is a good time for us to open up our Bibles and really get into what the word of God is really trying to tell us. So the first thing, that Paul tells Peter inside of 1 Peter 5 is that after you have suffered a little while. And again, I want us to put into perspective over the course of these next couple of weeks, over the course of these next couple of months, over the course of these next couple of years inside of our lives, whatever it is that you are going through, whatever suffering it is that you are going through, whatever uncertainty it is that you are going through, guess what? It's only going to happen for a while. And the Bible gives us this encouragement to let us know that it's just going to be a little bit, okay? You are not going to be, like I said, you're not going to be unemployed forever. You're not going to be sick forever. But God gives us this hope. God gives us this encouragement that after you have suffered a while, watch what happens because now he gives us four things that he promises us after this, after the suffering. Okay. He says, look, after, so after you have suffered a while, he will number one, restore you. And again, I want to talk to somebody today and I want to encourage somebody today to let you know that whatever it is that you have lost inside of your past, whatever it is that you have lost inside of these past couple of weeks, whatever it is that you have lost inside of these past couple of months, inside of these past couple of years, whether, whether it be a loss financially, whether it be a loss uh, academically, whether it be a loss uh, when it comes down to your family and people transitioning, I mean, people transitioning, know and understand that God has promised to restore. God has promised to restore in every single thing. We see it inside of, the, inside of the book of Job, that every single thing that was lost inside of Job's life, God was able to restore, but not just restore in any kind of way, literally give Job double what he lost. And I'm standing on that promise. My family is standing on that promise that every single thing that seems to be taken away from us, that every single thing that the devil, every single thing that the enemy appears to have taken away 
away from us, God has promised that he is going to restore it, that God is going to fill up your barns, that God is going to fill up your bank account, that God is going to fill you with love, that God is going to fill you with peace, that God is going to fill you with understanding. Amen. And at the end of the day, there is a restoration that is going to happen inside of your life after these next couple of weeks with the global pandemic that's happening. But there is a restoration that's going to happen inside of your life when it comes down to other elements inside of your life. God is going to restore your health, not just with COVID-19. God is going to restore your heart condition. God is going to restore you from diabetes. God is going to restore you from cancer. God is going to restore you from low self-esteem and depression. And after this, the first promise that the first promise that God gives us is that he will restore us. Now, the second promise that God gives us after he restores us, he will support us. Now, what's interesting is that after we have been restored, because things happen in cycles, history always repeats itself. After God restores us, the Bible says that now he will support us. So what does that mean? That whatever it is that is ready to come back inside of your life, if you are standing on God's word, if you are standing on God's promises, if you are standing on God's, if you are standing on the will of God for your life, God will support it. Whatever endeavor it is that you plan on going out and doing, whatever it is that you plan on, that you plan on going out and, and, and getting back into, God says that he's going to support you. You are not alone in this thing. You are not alone inside of this thing called life. And that restoration that takes place inside of your life, God says that not only am I going to restore you, I'm going to support you from here on out. And that is good news. I don't know about you all, but it actually makes me happy to know that every single thing that might have been lost, every single thing that might have been taken away, that after God restores it, that God is now going to support me, that God is now going to push me, that God is now going to elevate me, that God is going to give me the support that I need in order to get to the next level inside of your, inside, inside of life. And that is such the, and that is such a gospel message. That is such good news for all of us today, that after God restores us, then God also supports us. But now look at the third thing that God does. After God support, after God restores us, it says he will restore, he will support, and he will strengthen you. Now, there are a lot of people, myself included, who out there, you might be feeling weak. You might be feeling down. You might be feeling tired. You might be feeling hopeless. You might be feeling faithless. But God said that I will renew your strength, that he will give you the strength. Watch this. The same strength that he is giving you to get through this moment inside of your life after this, he's going to give you more strength to get through that next obstacle, to get through that to, to, to get through that next hurdle, to get through that next thing, that next level inside of your life. God says that he will strengthen you because let's just be honest, inside of these times of uncertainty, inside of these times when it seems as though everything around us is going wrong, sometimes we feel weak. Sometimes we feel hopeless. Sometimes it's like, God, can you just give me just a little bit more strength? And God has promised us after this, you will be stronger because you endured. After this, you will be more capable to withstand the wiles of the devil. You'll be capable literally to go through anything. Me and my wife, we were talking the other day and we were thinking about all the stuff that has happened inside of our lifetime. There's literally like a whole list of things that have happened inside of our lifetime. And at the end of the day, we have realized inside of our home that we are stronger now, that we are better now, that we are more equipped now. And at the end of the day, God is going to give you a strength like none other. And if you can get through this, you can get through anything. If you can get through, if you, if you can get through the unemployment line, guess what? It doesn't matter how many, you know, how many severance packages they give you, how many separation notices they get you, you can get through that too. It doesn't matter how many eviction notices you get, how many late notices you get, how many foreclosure notices that you get. You can get through this, but not just get through it any kind of way. You can get through stronger and better than where you were before. Now, the fourth thing that Paul says, he says, after you have suffered a little while, he says, he will restore you. He will support you and he will strengthen you. And the fourth thing that he says, and he will place you on a firm foundation. 
foundation. And we want to encourage somebody today and let you know that whatever it is that you might be going through, that after this, you will be able to stand stronger than where you were before. Because now sometimes, and the Bible lets us know that sometimes you've got to shake up the shallow ground every now and again. That sometimes you've got to be uncomfortable every now and again. That sometimes God has to, that God has to do some things inside of our lives and inside of the environment around us to let us know that he is still there. And although your health might be shaky right now, although your finances might be shaky right now, although your mental health might be shaky right now, although depression and stress and anxiety and so many things inside of your life might feel so shaky, might feel so unbalanced, might feel so unsecure, God has given us a promise that after this, he's going to give us that firm foundation that we are going to be able to stand on his rock. That's what the Bible says, on Christ the solid rock rock I stand that's why that's why even that's why even Jesus said when he was talking when he was talking to Peter, he says, who will I build this? Who will I build my church on? On this solid rock, okay? And God has given us a solid rock. God has given us a firm foundation. God has literally given us something that at the end of the day, we don't understand. We do not understand why things are happening around us. But, but one of the illustrations that God dropped inside of my spirit is that before you can build any skyscraper, before you can build any house, before you can build anything on ground, Ground, one of the things that the developer has to go in is go in and break up some of the shallow ground, that they have to go in and break up some of the dirt, that sometimes they have to go in and get underneath to make sure that that foundation is firm. And one of the encouragements that we want to give you all this week is that God is just breaking up what is underneath you right now because he wants to build something powerful on top of whatever it is that you're going through, that whatever it is that you are stressed about, whatever it is that you are anxious about, God God is just breaking it up right now because he's ready to build. God is just God, God, God is just getting in there and is, and is just moving some stuff and shifting some stuff because God is ready to build something, not, not, not just anything. The Bible says that he will give you a firm foundation because it's nothing like, there is nothing like building something on something that is not firm, on something that will not hold the weight, something that will not hold the, something that will not hold the level of intensity that is ready to be built. And we just want to encourage you all this week that after you have suffered just a little while, after this, God is going to strengthen you. God is going to restore you. God is going to support you. And at the end of the day, God is going to build something great and place you on a firm found. And that is the good news this week. That is something where, like I said, not even just dealing with what is presently happening inside of our society, but after anything inside of your life, remember the scripture. After anything, when it comes down to your health, remember the scripture. After anything that happens inside of your relationships, remember the scripture because God has given us the promise that after this, ultimately, we're going to be okay. Let me pray for you. God, we thank you. We thank you, O oh God, for your word that never fails us, that never gives up on us. God, we thank you, O oh God, for your promises that let us know that after a little while of suffering, that you have given us things, O oh God, that you have given us promises that we can take with us. Let us know, O oh God, that this will not last forever, that at some point, this thing will bowl over, O oh God, whatever it is inside of our lives that's causing us stress, that's causing us to feel this level of hope, of hope Restore, O oh God, our faith. Give us, O oh God, the things that we need, O oh God, to champion through this thing called life. For God, you gave us the promise to restore us, that every single thing that's been taken away from us, God, you will give it back to us. That not only, God, will you restore us, but you will support us, that you will push us, O oh God, that you will keep, that you will keep, that you will keep uh, pulling us up to that next level and give us that support to be that cheerleader that we need inside of our lives. God, you said that you would strengthen us for those out there that are feeling feeling weak, for those out there that are feeling down, for those out there that are feeling uh, defeated, we ask your God that you continue to give them the strength that they need. And ultimately, oh God, place us on that firm foundation. For God, we want to stand on you as our solid rock. We want to stand on you and we want to stand on your promises for your word is always yes and amen. We thank you, oh God, that after this, everything will be okay. It's in your name that we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Y'all like, share, do the watch parties. Charlotte, you coming? Okay. Hey, cutie. <laughs>
is mommy gonna come to? Y'all make sure that you all give. <laughs> Jump over to twcatl.org. Make sure that you all give. Thank you all so much, as always, just for being such a strong and support system, um, just for us and also for those inside of the community. Give your best gift. Thank you all so much uh, for helping us to continue our vision and our mission of connecting people back to God and humanity. Dare to dream, and we'll see you all next week. See, see you later. <laughs>